Hello everyone, my name is Caroline Hunvig and I am the Research Assistant at Valpro. Today I am going to be presenting on behalf of my co-authors from Edinburgh Napier University, Valpro and ESCOM on the study The Threat of Power Lines to Two African Vulture Species. As we all know, animals around the world are under constant anthropogenic pressure. Some of these examples include infrastructure, such as energy infrastructure or buildings, poaching, poisoning, uh, habitat fragmentation, just to name a few. One of these uh, groups of animals that are really taking a toll are vultures. And this is unfortunate as vultures play a critical role in the ecosystem, cleaning up carcasses, recycling nutrients and ridding the landscape of disease. Unfortunately, despite this, we have seen major declines in African vulture populations um, in the last three decades, with up to 97% decline in some populations. Our main threats to African vultures are poisoning, illegal trade of body parts, and electrical infrastructure. But what we're going to focus on today is that electrical infrastructure. So power lines um, affect vultures negatively in two ways, and the first of that is collisions, with the second being electrocutions. There are two types of power lines, namely transmission lines that you can see on the bottom left, and distribution lines which you can see on the bottom right. And commonly we find that transmission lines are associated with vulture collisions, where distribution lines uh, more often are associated with electrocutions. Our study focused on this threat of power lines to African vultures, and specifically we looked at two GYP species of vultures, so the Cape vulture and the African whiteback vulture. So the aim of the study was to identify power line crossing hotspots across South Africa using home range data and incident data, and then with that, understanding how these species utilize different landscape features, the time they spend in protected areas, and then what heights they fly at in the vicinity of restaurants and colonies. In order to do this, uh, we looked at previously collected data uh, from Valpro um, from various types of birds that they have released with tracking devices in the past. This included 20 African whiteback vultures and 54 Cape vultures that were tracked between 2009 and 2019. So the first item that we looked at uh, with our tracking data was home range estimation. And what we did with this was we had a look at KDEs and looked at the areas that these birds are using most often. What we found is that uh, African whiteback vultures are most commonly using savanna and grassland biome, most commonly in the northern parts of South Africa, which Cape vultures are using as well, but they are also using uh, sections of the Eastern Cape. We also found that Cape vultures uh, are using almost double the amount of space that African whiteback vultures are using. But for both birds, we also found that they are using very little time in protected areas and that most of their core area falls outside of these spaces. So just to give you a quick visual representation of what we found, um, these were the images that were created from the KDEs with, you can see their core ranges, uh, the slightly dark colors in the middle, um, obviously then branching out into areas where they are spending um, you know, more of their time. But those dark colors are indicating their core areas where they are spending 50% of their time. Um, and you can see uh, the white back vultures on the left, they're spending that time mostly there in the northern regions of South Africa. Um, and then you can see the same with the Cape vultures. However, you can see that big hotspot in the Eastern Cape. And then what we did next was we had a look at power line crossings, where essentially we looked at the trajectory uh, between two points and where that crossed um, a power line. And what we found is that these, during this time that we had the recording data for, these birds um, were crossing distribution lines over 300,000 times and transmission lines over 29,000 times. What we found as well is that there were specific uh, hotspots within the Northwest Province, Western Limpopo, and Central Eastern Cape. And then by combining the 50% KDE um, and having a look at that, 
there were approximately 15,000 crossings within that combined uh, KDE, which formed 50% of the total crossings. This just highlights the fact that these birds are um, encountering power lines regularly in the areas that they're using most often. Having a look at this visual representation of those power line crossings, um, crossing hotspots, we can see how they align with the home ranges that we are finding uh, with those birds. So in the northern parts of um, South Africa, as well as that small section in the Eastern Cape. The next item is landscape utilization. And essentially what we did was had a look at what features in the landscape are these birds utilizing? Uh, these included a number of things, including Cape vulture colonies and vulture restaurants. Once again, uh, we looked at this separately uh, with the Michalisburg uh, analyzed by itself. And what we found is that outside of the Michalisburg region, um, both of these species were significantly selecting for vulture restaurants, distribution and transmission lines. However, within the Michalisburg region, while uh, African whiteback vultures were not significantly selecting for any specific feature, Cape vultures were still uh, were significantly selecting for uh, Cape vulture colonies as well as vulture restaurants, among a couple other features. We also looked at the flight altitude of these birds, um, and we looked at the distance above the ground that these birds were flying. So what we did is we looked at a buffer zone of approximately 2.5 kilometers around Cape vulture colonies and vulture restaurants. Uh, what we found in these areas is that um, approximately uh, 300 meters above the ground is the average flight height that these birds were flying at, um, both within the 2.5 kilometer radius of Cape vulture colonies, as well as that radius for vulture restaurants. However, outside of that 2.5 kilometer radius, we were finding average flight heights of about 500 meters. Finally, we looked at incidents uh, that had been recorded between 1996 and 2019 and had a look at a total of 428 incidents. 82% of these incidents were related to distribution lines with the rest related to transmission lines. We thus found as well that 88% um, of the collisions were on transmission lines and 76% of the electrocutions were on distribution lines. Now, uh, previous studies have suggested a 50 kilometer buffer zone around uh, vulture restaurants and Cape vulture colonies. Um, and in fact, only 26% of the incidents that were reported occurred outside of these proposed buffer zones. Here we are looking at uh, where those incidents are occurring in regards to those buffer zones that have been proposed. Um, and we can see once again that we are looking at areas north, uh, in the north of South Africa as well as in the Eastern Cape. The results of the study have raised a few important points. And the first of these is that both of these species are spending most of their time outside of protected areas. This, of course, increases their risk of encountering threats, including those of power lines. So this study is the first to use GPS tracking for power line crossings. And having done this, um, we have once again highlighted the dangers of these power lines for these birds, as these birds are crossing these lines almost daily. Um, we've also had a look at that and seen that um, they are spending more than 50% of their time in these dangerous areas. And for this reason, we need to start looking at proactive mitigation strategies for these birds in these areas that they are using most commonly. We also found, of course, that power line incidents uh, are appearing to be linked to restaurants and colonies. Uh, and these are obviously representing uh, frequently used landscape features for these birds. With flight height reducing in these areas uh, within the 2.5 kilometer buffer zone of them, this puts them at a higher risk of power lines in these areas. And then of course, this study has supported the fact that vultures um, are covering huge ranges. 
This means that we need to be targeting our mitigation strategies, and specifically from the study, that seems to be focusing on colonies and restaurants. And then, of course, we have found once again that power lines are a major threat to these species. Uh, it is possible that we aren't seeing as many as there are only one or two individuals um, that are occurring at, a, at one specific incident, as opposed to perhaps um, a poisoning event where there are multiple species at an incident, but these incidents are not always easy to see. Um, but we know that these birds are encountering these power lines daily, and we know that they are a threat to these birds, um, as pointed out by Howard in 2020. Uh, the majority of admissions to Volpro's rehabilitation program were power line related, showing that these birds sharing these spaces with these power lines is um, clearly detrimental to their survival. So to conclude, we, we obviously have uh, found that power lines are a major threat to vulture populations. But specifically, we have found that power lines are encountered daily by these species and are selected for as possible roost sites. These species are also spending most of their time outside of protected areas, and therefore we need targeted mitigation of the areas that they are using. And then, of course, we also found that power line incidents occur most regularly around vulture restaurants and Cape vulture colonies. And for that reason, those are the items and the landscape features that need to be looked at first for proactive mitigation. Thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate it and I look forward to your questions. Um, before that though, we would just obviously like to thank our funders uh, that were part of the study and then of course um, all our other organizations and individuals that made this project possible. Thank you so much.